Hey folks, Garmin has just dropped a huge firmware update for the Instinct 2 series devices. Now this is part of their beta program. It's technically an alpha build within their beta program. There are basically two build levels. Alpha builds means that you need to have a computer to go ahead and drop it on your watch versus a beta build means it comes down via the wireless things. In the case of the Instinct 2 series, it comes via Bluetooth Smart versus something like a Phoenix 7 series, it'll come via Wi-Fi. In fact, this Phoenix 7 got an update last week. This is actually the Epix, but the Phoenix 7, the Epix, the Enduro 2, the Mark, a whole slate of a dozen new features up in the corner there, you can see those. But this video is about the Instinct 2 series. I'm just gonna run through all these new features. But first though, a quick note Note about Firmware Club, just so we're all on the same page here. Uh, number one, this is obviously beta level software. Garmin calls it alpha, but in their case, their public alphas are really their internal beta. So it's beta quality software, which means number two, don't update your watch if you're doing a race tomorrow or something like that. Like, don't, 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 just don't tempt those gods. It's not gonna work out very well. Number three, this is not the final set of features for this quarter release cycle update for this watch. Uh, and I'll talk about why that's the case a little bit later on in this video. Uh, and number four, remember that you do have to sign up for the beta program. It's linked down in the description there. Super easy to do. Uh, and with that, let's just get started. So first on the list here is the addition of morning report. Uh, this is something that Garmin has had on their 400, 255 and 955 watches since this past May or so. And then other watches over the course of the last six months. It is now available on the Instinct 2 series. Here's what it looked like this morning on my Epics, just kind of for context. It essentially shows you what's coming up for the day, shows you any structured workouts that you planned or any suggested workouts from the workout suggestion thingamajig. It shows you your sleep last night, your HRV status last night, as well as showing you weather and anything on your calendar. It's one of the most favorite features out there for people. Uh, and it's awesome to see here. You can go in the menu and customize exactly which of those features that you want to see or simply turn it off if you don't don't want to see it at all. Next they've added sleep mode. This just shows you the time. That's it uh, at night. So basically it's just the time, nothing else on there. Uh, and you can tweak this as you see fit in terms of the time it turns on as well as you know what it shows, etc. Uh, this was on the Phoenix 7 Epic series at launch and it's cool to see in other watches as well. After that they've added the race calendar widget glance and the primary widget glance. Uh, both things have been around other watches. Uh, and then they've added wrist-based running power. This is the biggie. This came on most of the other 300 plus dollar watches, except for the Venue series uh, this past fall, shortly after Apple announced uh, their wrist-based running power. And it means that you no longer have to have any sort of accessory with this to get running power. So no chest strap or RD pod, et cetera. You can just take this watch and go out and run and you'll get running power from the wrist. With that, notably though, are a bunch of settings to configure how that running power displays. Uh, do you want it from the wrist or do you want it from those sensors still? Um, or if you have Stride, for example, you can turn off this entirely. You can't integrate Stride into these native running power calculations yet, but you can turn off Garmin's running power so it doesn't override Stride's running power. Uh, those are all in the menu options there. Now, of course, I've been using Garmin's wrist-based running power for a while now, and essentially the numbers are the same as it would have been with the external sensors, except you just don't need those anymore. Next up on the list, they added some daily suggested workout improvements. They've added great adjusted pace, again, something that was announced back on the Enduro 2 series this past August, and we've seen it kind of go to a bunch of other Garmin watches over the course of the fall. This is just a data field, and it's a way to simply normalize the pace going up a hill or down a hill, uh, so you can kind of figure out whether or not you're keeping your effort pretty steady. Next on the list, they've added the backcountry snowboard activity, and they've added, quote, physiotrope training status improvements. And what this means is they've added the beginnings of the plumbing and the groundwork for doing HRV status sync and hopefully other things beyond that. Uh, Garmin's talked about for a while now, they're kind of re-architecting behind the scenes, physiotrope and memory card full. Garmin's been talking for a little while now about doing kind of a behind the scenes re-architecting a physio true up, ideally making it a bit more reliable. And with that, also including the ability to sync your HRV status. Uh, up until now, if you got a new watch that had HRV status on it, it didn't pull any of your existing data and you want to start that 19 day process over again. Now, looking at this right now, you can see again, it's just the beginnings of it. It pulled in from last night, my epics data, even though this watch was off in a box in the storage room, uh, it pulled in at least the correct value, but it hasn't pulled in the rest of the training status data. So it's just kind of the starting point there, but expect over the next probably month or so during the beta period, uh, it'll get finished. Next up, a minor one, mostly because I have no idea what this is. This is, uh, the listing says added RTS support for activity alerts. I don't know. I have no idea what this is. I've Googled it. It is producing absolutely nothing for what RTS is in a Garmin context here. Uh, so... Yeah, if you happen to know what that is, drop it down in the doohickey below there. Uh, after that, they've added a temperature recording activity setting. 
pretty straightforward. And then lastly, they updated the phone app pairing flow to use the pin comparison. Now, one thing that's worthwhile noting, in case you missed it on the last update a month ago, is in the previous production update of version 10.10, .10, so you can check your watch if you have that, uh, Garmin added a bunch of features, like six features, but in particular, one huge set of features, which is they added surfing, uh, windsurf, and kiteboarding activities, as well as the Tides app, to all of the Instinct 2 series units. Uh, that's notable because up until this point, you had to buy the Surf Edition to get those. And it, it was the same hardware, just different like color scheme. And it was kind of silly. I mean, the Garmin does lots of sort of like silly skew things, but that was one of the most silly things. And so it's nice to see that they added that across the board to all of the Instinct SKUs. And, and thus, if you do one of those sports, you don't necessarily need to buy just the Surf Edition. You can have any of the Instinct 2 variants. Now, as I said before, expect more features to be added before release. Uh, Garmin tends to start off his very first alpha slice and then kind of add more as they stabilize different features along the way. And I think if we look at most of the features here, they are ones that the other watches got in the previous quarter of the update. Kind of like the Instinct is just slightly behind the curve. So it'll be interesting to see if it catches up to the other watches in this particular quarter of the update or if it just kind of remains like kind of one quarter of the update behind. Anyways, if you found this video interesting or useful, if you could whack that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness, it'd be much appreciated. Have a good one.